welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. Nowadays, I'm exploring the Cessna 172 which is equipped with Garmin G1000 and in this regard, I'm making a series of videos for the beginners. The Garmin G1000 is a very powerful device and uh, you can just make your flight plans and uh, fly this plane around the world wherever you want to go. So in this video, I will tell you how to actually enter or modify the flight plan in the G1000 because before this all the videos that I've been posting I've been using the electronic flight bag of the Microsoft Flight Simulator to make the flight plans but today I will tell you how to make a flight plan in SimBrief and then how to enter it over here if you are familiar with the SimBrief and with the flight planning part you can skip the next section and you can simply go to the uh, part where I start configuring the G1000 but if you're not really familiar with the flight planning part let me just take you through it now this is the interface of simbrief.com where you can make a flight plan. So first of all, let's enter the departure airport which is OPLA for Lahore and uh, then OPI is for Islamabad. That's it. Now let's select the aircraft type which is Cessna 172R. It will appear over here like this. Once you click this, then your flight plan will be populated uh, with the fuel calculation because it's based on the aircraft. Uh, cruise profile this is actually the rpm of the engine 2300 rpms so uh, i'll just estimate uh, my fuel based on th this rpm of the engine now uh, you can see the schedule block time is coming no need to you know go through all this just uh, jump to this point if you're new to sim brief so one hour 55 minutes of flight time a uh, departure runway is 36 right and the arrival is 28 right. You can change them if you want, but I will just keep it like this. The cruising altitude will be 6,000 feet and I will be carrying uh, maybe full passengers or I can just set it to auto and freight, I can also set to auto. Now over here you will see that uh, the flight plan is there and uh, you can just simply use this flight plan to do the flight. But uh, you also have the option of changing it so let's say if I change it, then I have a different flight plan. So it's totally up to you. Even you can use this or this or this. But uh, let's go with this one because it has got two more waypoints. And I just want to show you in this video how to enter multiple waypoints in the G1000 and how to actually modify them. So that's why I'm using this route. Now over here in the route, you will see that there are four things uh, to be considered or to know. Number one is the SID, which is your standard instrument departure, uh, which is the first point. It appears like this. And the last point is STAR, which is standard terminal arrival. And everything in between is your waypoints and areas. Anything coming as an alphabet value is your waypoint. And anything appearing as alphanumeric is an area. So it's really simple. So what is star and what is a SID? Uh, star is actually um, the arrival procedure. So once you arrive at an airport, you just simply don't land. There is a certain arrival procedure and then an approach procedure. That will be loaded in the system. So that's why you need a star for the flight and SID is actually for the departure. So a procedure to fly out of an airport. Now once I will enter all this information in the system, you will come to know about it. So now, uh, you can generate this flight plan if you want. And now you will have this page. So for the flight planning, I will be using this part, a route. You can see the runway is coming, your SID is coming, and plus the waypoints and the star. So let's uh, go to the plane and start entering this flight plan over there. So in the cockpit, if you press Shift 2, you will get this view, which is a very comfortable view. And over here, you can make the flight plan. This is the navigation display part of uh, the G1000. And you can use this button, FPL, to basically, basically make the flight plan. So in order to make a flight plan, you have to have a cursor over here. In order to have this cursor, just uh, move your cursor over here on this knob. You can see there's a bigger dial, a knob, and a smaller one. So just bring your mouse over here. Uh, Hold it with your left mouse button and press the right mouse button. And now you will see this cursor is blinking. Now you can scroll through the flight plan 
uh, using the larger knob. So origin is uh, OPLA. Now in order to you know, enter the airport, just move the smaller knob and you will get this screen. Now over here, you can move the smaller knob to just cycle through all the alphabets or what you can do is this, press this uh, keyboard sign and then you can use your keyboard to enter the departure airport and press enter to accept it. So right now runway is coming. Uh, you can select it by using the smaller knob. 36 right is the run um, runway. Either you can do this or you can just simply press clear and go back. I will tell you how I will actually select the runway, how I will do that. Now, if you look at your screens, the next point in the flight plan is uh, Sala. And then there is an airway J220, which is taking you to Sala. So instead of entering um, the airway, you can simply enter Sala. Again, move the smaller knob, press this keyboard sign, and enter the waypoint. And press enter, and that's it. So from Lahore, you'll go to Salna, and then you will go to SLT. Again, move this knob, press the keyboard sign, and SLT. Let me do it again. Press enter. Now, this is a VOR in Pakistan. Obviously, Estonia or US, I'm not flying over there. So this is a, a navigation device. Or uh, it's in Pakistan, Sialkot, a city uh, a bit far from Lahore. Uh, you have to select this. Press enter, and that's it. Now you have the destination because, you know, en route, it's done. And then the destination is OPIS. So click this keyboard sign and OPIS. Enter. And uh, you can just press enter and that's it. So you can press flight time two time, uh, flight plan two times to, you know, get rid of the cursor. Or maybe you can also do this. Okay. Now this is a flight plan. There's something missing. The departure and the arrival procedure. Now you right now you can see it's a straight departure, but uh, you have to select the departure. And for the arrival, obviously, you have to select the arrival. So what you can do is this. Bring your cursor over here again. Uh, just use this knob to move the cursor. Bring it to OPLA. You will get all the weather information over here. The QNH is 1019. You can adjust the altimeter. That's it. And then what you can do, you can select the departure. So for this, press this button procedure. And over here, you will see select departure. So press enter. And over here, you have to select the set coming in same brief. And it's 2F. That's it. Press enter and runway 36 right. Select the runway, enter, and load. That's it. Now there is a proper departure procedure. Again, if you bring the cursor over here, and I just want to show you something. Uh, for departure, when I just bring my cursor over here, I can use this small knob to basically look at the departure procedures. Now, if you look at the departure event procedures, um, this doesn't make sense because, you know, the plane is going towards SLT. Okay, so that's why if I ignore a Salna and SLT, then I can go to this point. Then I can even select this. And again, if I'm uh, taking off from runway 18, right, then I will take this procedure. So this is how actually you read all the procedures. And again, for runway 18, I can take this procedure. So these are all the procedures. And uh, you can select any of them if you want. So this is the flexibility that, that you get over here in the G1000 that you can look at the departure and the arrival procedures and you can select the one that you want. But we will stick to the one that is given to us by same brief. Press enter, 36 right, enter, and just load, enter. And now you have to select the approach. Now move this cursor to over here, OPIS, procedure, and approach, enter. So this is runway 28, right. I can use Y and Z. So for this flight, I will use Y. Press enter, vectors. 
Now, this is something that you want um, to know <laughs> that which uh, one to use either to be BTR or ISDO. And you see this is coming as a transition over here. So let's uh, bring up the charts, the built-in charts for the Microsoft Flight Simulator and uh, look at them. So what I can do is this. I can just enter OPLA over here. I'm actually not using the AV for the flight planning. It's only for the charts. And OPI is over here. I can click this and uh, I can select runways. Oh, sorry, uh, in the in the um, maps, in the charts. So approaches, 28 right. And you have ILS Y, 28 right. Now just look at this. So transition is actually a point from where uh, your approach starts and your normal flight plan ends. All your waypoints and the airways, they end. Likewise, we have entered uh, SALA and SND. They are the waypoints. Then afterwards, uh, once you just go through all the flight plan, then you have to go towards the approach. And approach is basically a point where the transition starts. So you uh, finish your normal uh, flight plan then you go into the arrival and then you go to the approach. So this is the point uh, transition where this uh, approach starts. So that's why you have to enter this. So as you can see, this approach is starting from ISDO. So simply select this. So this is not given over there in the sim brief. This is what you have to figure out using the airport charts. In the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, these airport charts were not available, which was a big issue. But now we have them in uh, this uh, flight simulator and we can use it. Just press enter and minimums. You can see minimums are coming. Uh, this is 2180. Just use, use this one um, uh, to be on the safe side. Basic, basically, this is an altitude at which you will hear this call out sign. Uh, call out, not <laughs> the call out sign. This was a good one. So you will hear a call, call out minimums, which will let you know that you, know, um, you are at an altitude where you can just uh, make a decision whether to go for the landing or not. Because you're going to perform an ILS landing and um, instruments are basically taking you towards the runway. There can be an inaccuracy. So that's why you have to look at the runway in order to see whether you're properly aligned with the runway or not and you're going to land. So if you're going to land, it's okay. You go um, ahead with it. But if you can't, then you have to perform a missed approach or go, um, or go around. So that's why this altitude is required. This is 2180. And you can just turn it on by moving the smaller knob. And now it's coming barrow and radio. Radio is coming? No, only the barrow coming. So as the plane measures uh, the altitude based on the barometer pressure, that's why it's, you select barrow. And then the feed, just uh, move the smaller knob, take it to 2180. That's it, press enter, enter, and uh, just move this larger knob. Just bring your cursor over here, load, enter, and yes, that's it. Now you have the approach. Last thing which you have to do is enter the arrival procedure. So you can bring your cursor over here, even over here, and press procedure, and then arrival. And that is Indy 1B. Now you can see even, you can uh, just uh, uh, look at all uh, the arrival procedures over here on the screen. So Indy 1B, okay? So it will take you to this point index and then to ISDO and then to OPIs. Press enter, that's it, and uh, just load. Now you have a fully functional flight plan can zoom in and zoom out and look at the flight plan. If I press this flight plan, it will just go. Now what I can do is this, I can just uh, go through the flight plan. Very interesting way to do it in G1000. Just bring your cursor over here. Um, press and hold with the left mouse button and then press the right mouse button. Now you will see this cursor over here on G1000. Now hold this knob and just move it up and this cursor will move. And then you can just look at your flight plan, whether it's right or not. So you can move your cursor like this to move this cursor on the screen. So you're playing around with two cursors. 
Now, um, I can zoom in. Just bring this cursor in the middle because wherever this cursor is, actually the system will zoom into that point. So that's why you have to bring your cursor over here in order to look at your approach. And it's good. So now, as you can see, the plane will come to INDEC and then to ISDO and then it will move forward. So that's how you actually read the transition. So transition is a point where your arrival ends and uh, the approach starts. Look at the arrivals. 28 right. And if I click this. Even you can see ISDO is here. So all the points, either you're coming from any part of the world, your the plane is coming over here to this point, ISDO. And from here, the approach will start. So that's why this is the transition point. Now there are one or two things I just wanted to tell you uh, before I end this video. If you go to the flight plan, and um, just clear this, bring the cursor over here. If you want to add a point between these two points, there's a very simple way to do it. So if you want a point that is after Salna and before SLT, uh, bring your cursor to SLT. And when you enter the point, it will be entered above SLT. So let's say I again enter Salna, just for an example, because you know there are only two waypoints. If I had more, then um, I would have been able to give you a proper waypoint. But just to show you, uh, let me just activate the keyboard. That's it, press enter, and invalid flight plan modification, <laughs> enter. Oh, it's not letting me enter anything. Uh, maybe I can enter, let me just try it again. Can I do index? Let's see. Yeah, now it has entered INDEC. So after Salna, the point plane will go to INDEC, then it will come back to SLT, and then back to INDEC. <laughs> but this is how uh, you basically enter a waypoint, before a waypoint, if you want. And then similarly, you can do it for Salna as well. You can enter any point. Let's say if I just change it, and if I want to go to ISDOR, then I can use this. Enter, and the waypoint is entered before Salna. Now what I can do is this, I can delete this, just bring your cursor over here and press clear, remove is door, press enter, and that's it. And if I want to remove index, clear, enter, and it's not removed. You can also change um, the arrival and departure, uh, very simple. Let's say I can select this option, procedure, Oh uh, no, uh, just go back. Not this one, menu, press menu. And then you can completely delete the flight plan, remove the departure, remove the arrival, and remove the approach. So let's say if I remove the departure, enter, menu, remove arrival, enter, menu, and remove approach. That's it. So all the approach, approaches uh, and arrivals, departures, everything will be removed using this procedure. And then if you want it again, you can just do it anytime by pressing this procedure, select departure, select arrival, select approach, and then you can make your flight plan. So I hope this was a useful video for you. And uh, now you will be able to enter uh, the flight plan over here in uh, the G1000 interface. And plus you can also modify that. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section or if you want to add anything to this video, uh, the comment section is there for you. Thank you very much for watching my video. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.